Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. What I'm holding here in my hand is a Goonies skeleton key made out of foam that I coated in wall plaster. Today I'm going to be melting down some scrap copper wire that I have. I'm not really sure exactly where I got this wire from. I do have a large container just filled with scrap wire. Some of it was probably from a microwave that I scrapped out in the past. Some of it is also probably from a condenser or a alternator motor that I had, again, laying around in my garage in my pile of scrap. I do have a few of those videos in my video library. I'll leave those links in the description below if you'd like to check those out afterwards. I'll be using the Castmaster Elite GG5000 propane melting furnace. I recently did a video on melting down some beach chairs and that's what this crucible is still left in the furnace from. After melting all the good aluminum down, the bottom is left with some junk, slag, dross, whatever you want to call it. I like putting cardboard in between the block on the bottom of the furnace and the crucible. Normally, the crucible does not stick to the block when removing the crucible from the furnace. Now today, you will see later, it did not help in any way. The crucible was 100% stuck to the block. I'm going to get this furnace fired up and then I'm going to head into the garage and start the lost foam casting process for this Goonies Skeleton King. I just want to apologize ahead of time that there is a cricket or maybe two crickets inside of my garage. I tried my best to cancel out the noise in my video editing of the cricket. It did dampen it slightly, but you can still hear it. Before I start the lost foam casting process, let me just show you how I made the pattern. First, I carved out the Goonie skeleton key using my CNC machine. I carved it out of Owens Corning polystyrene craft foam. Once the pattern was carved out, I then sprayed it down with some soapy water. The soapy water helps release any air bubbles when coating it with this sheetrock joint compound. I'm coating this with a watered down mixture of the joint compound. It's not straight up joint compound. Afterwards, I like to blow on it with some air to try to move around the plaster and try to help remove any more air bubbles that are left over. When you are finished, let it dry for 24 hours. Because I'm using copper, I need to add an additional coating. This is the same plaster, but what I did was I added sand into the plaster mix. This additional layer gives it a harder shell. I believe it's very important when using it with lost foam and casting in copper or brass, or any heavy metal for that matter. I never add this coating when I'm doing aluminum. In my experience, when doing lost foam casting, using a heavy metal, it tends to bleed out of the simple thin layer of wall plaster coating that you applied in the beginning. After this coating's finished, let this sit for another 24 hours and we're ready to start the lost foam casting process. This process is by far the easiest way to cast metal. You take your piece of foam, you put it in a metal container, you fill it to the very top with dry sand. That is actually the most important thing. The sand has to be dry. Once filled, put a pouring cup on the top surrounding the foam and then fill it all the way to the top. That additional sand will then hold the pouring cup in place. Now it's time to check on that copper. Looks like that copper is starting to melt down some and is giving me room to start to add more copper. Some of this wire was very oily, so that is what you see here. The oil is actually starting to burn away off of that copper.
this sit and give it a little bit of time to melt down. I wasn't really keeping track of time, but I think it's been about 10 or 15 minutes. And now I can remove any of the slag that has now floated to the top from this wire. And this is a perfect opportunity for you to hear that cricket or those crickets that were bothering me the whole time. Once all the slag is removed, the crucible is now clean and ready to pour. Now if you're looking at what I'm wearing and thinking it's cold outside, it's not. I'm just trying to protect myself in case of a metal splatter. You always want to protect yourself wearing any personal protective equipment that you have that you can wear in case of some sort of metal pop or molten metal splash that could possibly hit your skin. After I poured the copper, I let it sit for about 15 minutes for it to solidify. And now I'm going to just dump it out into another container to see how it came out. This is actually a really good opportunity to see how hard that additional shell was and how well it did on keeping that molten copper inside of it. I do know there's manufacturers out there that make hard shells made for metal casting. This is not one of them, but it does work very well for doing lost foam casting. I've never tried this with any other type of casting, so I cannot say if it works. I just know it works well here. By the looks of it, it looks like this came out really good. So I'm going to take this into the garage, cut off the sprue, and clean it up for you guys. I am really impressed on how well this came out. I can't spot any locations where the copper bled out of the pattern. It filled it out perfectly. Not only that, I'm actually really happy at how the wire wheel made it look. It didn't polish it up like it does normally. Maybe there was something on the wire brushes, I'm not sure. But it gave it that aged look. And I think it looks really good. And I know everyone would love to know exactly what this weighs. So I have it on the scale here and I am displaying it for everyone. I am super excited about how well this came out. If you like it as much as I did, make sure to hit that like button and leave a comment below and tell me what you think.